Thank you. I uh, must start by saying I've never talked to this many people before. If I'm a little bit shaky, please hang in there with me. Um, departing from my notes a tiny bit, I heard all kinds of uh, nice words this morning from our ministers about what they're doing to help us along the way. Um, my talk's going to be a little bit of a bummer. I'm going to talk about what they're doing to get in your way to slow things down. Because when I deal with ministers, I've been dealing with Ministry of Environment, in various ministries, other ministries, and what comes to my mind is headaches, delay, and cost. But I wasn't going to start that way. This is the way I was going to start. I was going to say, some members of this audience are interested in changing some Canadian pressure vessel rules so that we can get European biomass equipment into Canada. I'm going to talk about these rules. My talk is split into three parts. Can you people hear me? Louder. I'm going, to, I'm going to try, okay, I'm going to try. Okay, some people here want to change some of Canada's pressure vessel rules so that you can get European equipment into Canada. Um, I've got to talk about this. My talk split into three parts. Uh, first of all, why we have safety rules. Secondly, uh, Canada's safety rules. And third, is there anything we can do to improve things in the future? Um, this is going to work. The right, the right one? That one. Okay, my name is Lawrence Brundrett, I'm Pressure Vessel Engineering, and as I told you in the introduction, I've been doing this for 20 years. Um, in the last 10 years that I've been registering pressure vessels, I've noticed that it takes about twice as long as it used to. The delays are longer, the costs have gone up, the paperwork required is a lot more. Um, and Let's see, I'll just get my notes here. Okay. Why we have rules. Let's go back to 1937 in Texas. New London School had a natural gas leak in the basement. The basement filled up with an explosive mix of natural gas and air. A spark ignited it and there was a big explosion. 300 people died. Now, this um, Texas became the first place to add odorants to natural gas. And I got two conclusions from this. We live in a complex society. We need safety rules. Also, many people gave their lives from, for some of our best safety rules. Complex societies also create useless safety rules. This one's from Ontario. We were involved in a project where a European manufacturer brought standard equipment into Ontario. This is a photo shows a small portion of a lube oil skid, and they weren't allowed to use it. This is, you know, standard hydraulic components designed for much higher pressures than they're actually used at. We spent four months, the portion of the project was delayed, and we spent $100,000 rebuilding this small piping system. We converted a proven industrial design into an Ontario-only prototype. And I asked myself, who are we helping here? So, these are my, this is my opinion. I'm going to talk about rules and regulations, so you've got to know where I stand. When you don't have enough rules, people suffer. When you have too many rules, the only people benefiting are the people collecting the fees and generating their own jobs from it. And I have my own opinion, and everyone else has their opinion on what these rules are. Let's start with Canada's rules. Canada's system is based on American rules. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers writes these rules. Sections 1 and 4 are used for boilers. You'll need that for biofuel. Section 8 covers pressure vessels. Two commonly used piping standards, B311 and 313. There are Additional rules made by ASME that we also allow in Canada, these are the most common ones. These cover the life cycle of your components, from the design, the manufacture, the inspection, the installation, the maintenance. European standards don't exactly fit into these, so we don't allow European equipment into Canada. It is, however, possible to redesign European equipment to meet North American standards. We were hired by Weizmann to convert 10 of their Kube vessels to meet North American requirements. 
Along the way, we made the welding more difficult. We increased the material thicknesses, added a lot more inspection openings. We had to use certified shops, North American certified shops. Doesn't mean they have to be made in North America, but the shops have to be certified here. When the manufacturers are done, there's a little form right here, right in this corner. This is a standard national board form. A manufacturer fills out this form and they can ship the product anywhere to the United States. How about Canada? In Canada, we start with that and we add more rules and regulations. We have to register this design in every province where we want to install it. This is what the Americans used to do until 1921, they got tired of it. Each state, even some cities had their own rules. They came up with a national board standard. So we submit our drawings, our code calculations, and our quality control proof. We submit that with each design to each province. The provinces don't just file this. They review it. There's an engineer on the other end. They give you a phone call. They ask you questions. Our job as a designer is to come up with a design that every province can agree to. We pay registration fees. Simple vessels, you need about $4,000 to pay all the filing fees across the country. These Weizmann vessels are not simple, they cost more. And, oh, one thing I forgot. Um, if you change your mind, if you want to update, you want to innovate your design at all, you got to go through this whole process again. Not very friendly to innovation. Okay. So we took these 10 Weizmann boilers and we registered them across Canada. We sent out 31 pounds of paper for each vessel. We did that 10 times. I thought the photocopier repair guy was part of our payroll. <laughs> took us a year and a quarter. We got all the provinces to agree on one design so we could have one design for each one of these boilers and ship it across Canada. You got a biofuel boiler, you've got more than a boiler, you've got piping systems. What are these piping systems? You've got feed water, you've got wa hot water, steam coming out, you've got compressed air lines, you've got natural gas. Depending which province you're in and what's going through these lines, you've got to register them. If you're going to have a registered piping system, you have to have registered components. We call these fittings. These fittings have to be registered in each province where they're going to be used. I'll get to that in a moment. And each piping system has to be registered each time you're going to use them. Doesn't matter if last week you installed an identical one down the street, you got a new installation, you're going to register it again. And if you want to install piping across Canada, you'll need to, at least two different quality control programs. Which piping, things need, piping systems need registering? Well, that depends which province you're in. The Canadian B-51 standard doesn't tell you which piping system need registering. It just says you have to register high-pressure piping systems. Okay, so that leaves it up to the provinces. Each province has their own code adoption document, and they define in it or on their website which piping systems need registering. So each one of those flow charts is for one province depending on your pressure, what your fluid is, what your temperature is, tells you whether you have to register or not. Two of the provinces don't have any guidelines, but they do require this registration. You just have to guess. You can find these flowcharts on our website. Okay, so you can do a piping system or you're going to do a vessel. You're going to need these fittings to make it out of. Okay, piping systems are more restrictive than vessels. No one knows why. Um, on a piping system, elbows, tees, flanges, these are standard industrial components. You have to find the ones that have been registered in the provinces before you can use them. If you're doing a vessel, in addition, you also have to do your pressure relief devices, your valves, your hoses, stuff like that. They have to be registered. As a user, you don't register these. The manufacturers of these components have to register them. They have to put together the same packages, the engineering calculations, the drawings, the quality control program, ship it off to each province where they want to use them, and they have to do this every 10 years. 
We do this for a lot of manufacturers, and they hate it. They, if you're a manufacturer of fittings that sells products across the world, half your worldwide registration costs will get eaten up in Canada. More than half your headaches will come from here. And if you're going to use these products, you have to find them. Each jurisdiction has a list of what's allowed. Only one jurisdiction publishes it, ACICRN.com. You can find these fittings. Some of them, that's for Atlantic Canada. Some of the other provinces use the same fittings. You'll have to phone up the manufacturers and find out. As I said, every province has these lists, but the rest of the provinces keep them secret. I have a friend who has a power station. He installed a gas turbine. You're looking at the afterburner on it, and there's a waste heat boiler. So this is a cogeneration package. He bought a standard American afterburner. I was told that he couldn't turn it on. So this is a, in Ontario again. He spent half a year dealing with the jurisdiction, didn't get anywhere, and decided his only way forward was to rip the whole thing out and build it again. So he spent $100,000 doing that, and it's in use today. You're looking at picture of the nice, shiny, new replacement system. Okay, Ontario has its own special rules. I'm an Ontario engineer, and in Ontario, if you're going to register a pressure vessel, you have to have it registered, signed off by an Ontario professional engineer. Why would I be protesting this? I get business from it. However, what happens when more than one province does this? This is the only place in the world where this happens. Okay. So, we're going in the future, every provincial jurisdiction, every engineering society is trying to get this done in their own province. A lot of provinces have said, get lost, this is a stupid idea. Ontario accepted this, but in the future, if you have 13 provinces and territories all with this rule in their books, where are you going to go to get 13 engineers to sign off on your drawings before you register across Canada? Two rules I know almost nothing about, I'm just going to mention them. There's CSA electrical requirements, and there's a new CSA biofuel boiler standard. Is there any hope for the future on this? Well, two provinces have decided, Saskatchewan and British Columbia, that they'd go beyond just collecting fees from their users and try to figure out what the users actually need. Saskatchewan first. They decide that the Canadian system of requiring each component to be registered in each province was a little bit ridiculous. 88 years after National Board, they joined on. You can keep an idea down, but not forever. I'm pretending here that Ontario, instead of Saskatchewan, did this. If Ontario did this, it would get rid of this requirement for Ontario engineers. How did Saskatchewan do it? Really simple. They added these two paragraphs to their code adoption document. It's in the Saskatchewan legislation. The first paragraph says that national board vessels would be allowed in Saskatchewan. They went beyond that. They said, well, why not accept vessels that have been registered elsewhere in Canada? That's the second paragraph. These are very simple changes, very effective. Okay, two provinces, British Columbia and again Saskatchewan, decided that the fitting requirements were a bit ridiculous. They didn't get rid of them entirely, but they drastically reduced the categories of fittings that need to be registered. Here's the big one for you guys. Can we get this European biofuel equipment into Canada? Okay. And people have... Oh, sorry. I'm on my last slide here. People have approached the Canadian B-51 committee, that's the people who write up the Canada-wide rules, and they ask, can we get it uh, added? And the, who, are they, who do they go to? This is a committee with 60 people on it. Half of them represent the jurisdictions that administer these rules. Half of them represent the pressure vessel users and manufacturers in Canada. There's a subcommittee on boilers, nine people. Six of them represent the manufacturers of vessels. Now, what you're doing is you're going to these six people and saying, I want to be your competition, and I want to bring vessels into the country that are made to a standard that allows thinner materials, fewer inspection openings, easier welding. 
they might be resistant. Above that, the other half of these people, the other 30 people on this committee, they represent the jurisdictions. We've got all these people reviewing drawings, passing judgment on them. No other country does this. We've got to retrain these people if they're going to be reviewing European designs. They might be resistant too. Okay, so this went to the B-51 committee in 2008. 2009, the latest edition came out. This wasn't included. The next update to the B-51 is expected in 2015. If you want changes before then, you're probably going to have to work at the provincial level. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a bit of information on registering vessels in Canada. If you bring equipment into the country, I suggest caution. It might cost you a lot more and take a lot longer than you expect. Thank you.